So how many people here have seen Black Panther? I had a realization while I was sitting there listening to the truth telling and the powerful words of Marie St. Fleur. Wakanda does not have to be a fantasy. It is something that we can live every day. We are just as excellent, but we need that unity. And I'm also reminded as you talk about those who've come before us that sometimes when you inherit something, and something as profound as a freedom, you know, it's like when you're a beneficiary of something, because you didn't work for it, you don't always treat it with care. And so thank you for reminding us that we are the beneficiaries of freedom and of excellence and of pride, and we need to walk in that every day. And so as I uh, uh, transition, uh, the words of James Baldwin ring true, that your crown has already been bought and paid for. <laughs> All you have to do is put it on your head. Your crown has already been bought and paid for. All you have to do is put it on your head. And so with that in mind, this evening, I would like to salute and to recognize and to celebrate a king amongst us who is wearing that crown ably every day, Dr. Jean Bonnet. And you see, and, and look, and you know how he walks, and all of you who know, he is such a humble man. A humble and great man, a Haitian physician whose private practice has thrived in Mattapan for over 20 years. His cultural practice of medicine has been replicated in Milton and Kearney hospitals. And not only that, he has been asked to lead on partner on various multicultural initiatives. Um, while cardiovascular disease and diabetes are his main focus, Dr. Bonet is also co-owner of MCTV, that's multi, the multicultural television channel, 283 on Comcast, and his mission is to educate and to empower the community. Dr. Bonet provides a platform for physicians, community members, and leaders to bring awareness and education to underserved ethnic communities. And might I add, although it is challenging to, um, to practice this myself uh, every day, but our health is our greatest wealth. And for all of the rights that we're looking to preserve and the ways that we're looking to advance and address disparities, you know, quality in education and housing that is affordable and jobs that pay a living wage and all of those things, if you aren't healthy, you can't pursue all those things that we're fighting to advance and to deliver to you. So as a people, our health is our greatest wealth, and Mattapan has one of the highest concentration of health disparities in our city. Dr. Bonet has lived and worked in the Boston area for nearly three decades, serving the residents in Mattapan as a family physician, focused primarily on diseases of the heart, and as I said, also diabetes, and he has been intentional he made it a point to open his practice in the heart of the community, La Foyer, and not too far from St. Angela Mercy Church, and other um, Haitian restaurants and services in the heart of the Haitian community. He was intentional about that. Dr. Bonet is a foundational member of the community. If you're Haitian in Boston, I have no doubt you have a family member, a close friend, who has visited this clinic. Raise your hand if you have received care, someone in your family, by Dr. Bonet. What an incredible legacy. This extraordinary man, this hero in our community, again, he has been so intentional about this work and making sure that those who uh, come here and are struggling due to language and cultural barriers to access health care, to navigate this very complicated system, and are just seeking to be in the company of someone and something that is familiar. And Dr. Bonet has provided that. He is someone who has never forgotten his roots, he lives and practices his values. He is a role model and an inspiration, and it is an honor to recognize him this evening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Apparently, the council has already said it all. <laughs> uh, 
first of all, allowed me to really give thanks to my great Lord, who allowed me to help me to carry that journey, to make that journey. He never left me alone. He always supported me. Glory to God. Yeah. Uh, when I received the call regarding this award, I was feeling, I don't have no human word, Mr. to say, knowing who you are, your passion, also for, your, for the community, I really flattered. And again, I got no word to say thank you. Well, you so deserve it. Talking about this award, I cannot prevent me to go back to that journey where I've never been alone. I had some physician uh, in the community, social workers, uh, I could name them forever, aviation multi-service center like Monestim, physician like Georges Gentil, uh, Nicole Puydan, Dr. Jean-Louis, we never stop days, week, or weekend just to work on the behalf of the community. I salute them. <laughs> For those of you who engage in public community health, community issues, you know somebody has to pay the price allowed me to thank my family who are right here. Uh, Can we have people and for the yes, photo? please. Can the whole family please come up? Well, honestly, we'd like to include all the kids. Ed, come here. Because too often, I rob them their time, good family time, to do community things. And if I could do them, it's just because they, I receive their support. And one person who really pays the price is my lovely, lovely wife. <laughs> Today, I heard it from Marie, I heard it from you. Last day of Black History Month, but history, last History, history Month is, Black History Month is every day. Yeah. But let me ask you the same question. Does history matter? If we don't take that responsibility, we should ask, does history matter? I could hear how Marie really vacillate <coughs> over chronologically an history before we get here. And I could tell you, in July 4th, 1776, the bell of freedom rang and Philadelphia. But was it for us? No, it wasn't for us. On July 14, 1989, 1789, he rang again at Bastille. Was it for us? No. And Frederick Douglass understood that, and he said, until Haiti spoke. Until Haiti, Haiti spoke. That's a reality. Before Haiti spoke, we were things. But after Haiti spoke, we become human beings. Yes, sir. 1804 humanizes. Our ancestors dug up the tunnel of slavery to construct the highway of freedom. Amen. Freedom for everyone, not only for Haitian. We know what's happened in Central South America. 
We know where we go to. It's not only Venezuela. It's not only Colombia, Mexico, everybody. This is what Haiti is about. And we cannot talk about democracy without freedom. So we are the soul of that democracy. So we get here. We get here today. He took us La Creta Piero. He took us Vertier. He took us Bloody Sunday to get here today. Just to tell you, no price is too high for free to pay for freedom. Yes, no price is too high to pay for freedom. And we have the moral responsibility to keep freedom alive. We have that moral responsibility. Whatever it takes, and that freedom doesn't have color. Freedom doesn't have race. Freedom is a common denominator of mankind. And the great Lord, the great Lord who created us, he gives us freedom. So no one, no one is allowed to take freedom out of us. And as you say, Mary, freedom is not a physical thing. Freedom is economic. Freedom is mental. So we have to fight every day. Every day. All the beings which allowed us to get there, education and all this, we need to say, don't let anybody say, no, we cannot do it. Okay. It's our responsibility, responsibility of the family to move forward. So once again, keep freedom alive. Before I, part of freedom, before I step out, we are lucky. We are living probably one of the greatest state of the union. Uh, people live everywhere to come, not only being the maker of medicine, but the ability, access to get served is way more easier than other states. But regardless, we still got a long way to go. Health disparity is a real issue. Health inequity is a real issue. Here, in that great state, where all other people come to get health, and remember, your health is your wealth, if you don't get it. What is it? Most likely, I'm talking about immigrant and minority health. They are living here. But they're not, they're not in the mainland. They're living in an island without bridge connecting to the mainland. So we have, and I was happy to hear that Brigham and Women's really sponsored this, this event. That means they understand the value of it. But it's multifaceted, it's complex, but it's up to us to work together from all different creeds really to make that a reality. Once again, I will be looking forward to work with you to make that a reality. Thank you. We do. So, um, again, as, you, as, it, uh, as is apparent, the doctor is very deserving of this recognition and we are not alone in having wanted to honor him. We also have a, a citation from State Representative Dan Cullinane. So Leon will just present that very quickly, and then we'll do a photo op. Good evening, everyone, Madam President, and uh, Councilmen and women of the great city of Boston. My name is Leon David. Um, it is an honor to be here with everyone tonight. I'm here to present a citation on behalf of the Office of State Representative Dan Cullinane. Dr. Bonet, who has mentored me as a younger person, um, working on a lot of issues, health-related, as well as the American Haitian Federation. I especially feel, as a young Haitian man, privileged to present this citation to Dr. Bonet. And I stand on your shoulders as we continue and accept the baton moving forward. Thank you. So I just want to read the language really quickly. Um, Dr. Jean Saint-Four Bonet, 
in recognition of 30 years of service to the City of Boston and the Commonwealth of Massachusetts providing healthcare services in diabetes, COPD, HIV, cardiovascular disease, and other health disparities, given this 28th day of February 2018, signed by Speaker of the House Robert A. DeLeo and State Representative Dan Cullinane, we want to say to you we love you and we look forward to continued working with you and your service to the community. Count on us as continued partners. Thank you. Thank you.